Shabbat Shalom Saints and welcome back to Wakefulness Theology. My name is Messenger Paula and today is a special video because I only put out videos uh, on um, the Friday Sabbath once a week um, and this is my worship to the Most High Father Yahuwah. Now today is special because the Most High Father has moved on Pi Day. If you don't know what Pi Day is, I didn't know what Pi Day was. Pi Day turns out is March uh, 14th, which makes sense because it's 3.14. I have lived through March 14th for many years. Never thought about it before in my life um, until a couple of days ago. So I think it was Sister Amber on the Facebook group who said, Happy Pi Day! And I was like, wow, that yeah, that's true. Turns out, let me tell you how the Most High Father moved on Pi Day. So I'm going to tell you the story from my perspective first and then tell you what actually happened. So from my perspective, here you can see the text that I wrote um, when I woke up, which was the 15th. So I had the dream the day of Pi. So that night when I went to bed, I had the dream. When you start your walk with Yah Yahushua, Holy Yahushua, the Holy Rabbi, there's stages of your development. And I have no idea how many stages, but so far I've been through about three or four of them. So there's probably many more to go. Um, so when you're starting this walk with Yahushua, there gets to a certain point where you really get close, you really get serious, and that's when the demons attack you. It's like, you know, if this is the level and you're gonna really just get over that level, they come after you with a fury. So I had, um, you know, you, you go through spiritual evolution, so I've had many times in my life for, you know, even periods of years where I've had to go through spiritual warfare, especially when you sleep. Okay, there's something about the sleeping process where I guess our spirits leave our bodies. You know, that's when it jumps off, at least for me. So I haven't had any kind of spiritual in my sleep while I'm sleeping. I haven't had any spiritual attacks in quite a while. I would say, um, I could just be guessing, but uh, maybe 2013 or something like that? Maybe 2012, 2013? I mean, it's been a long time. Okay, this is 2018, so that's a long time. So I'm really surprised because my dreams are quite peaceful. But on this night, <laughs> let me tell you, child, um, in my dream, my mouth was frozen. Now I've had these, you know, this is one of the ways they attack is that, you know, the room gets cold or, or it's dark or you hear the, you know, um, and you're frozen. Okay, there's there's different versions, but the end of the point is usually at some point you're frozen, all right? This particular time, my body wasn't frozen. My body was fine. It was only my mouth that was frozen. And this is weird. I've never had that experience before. Only my mouth was frozen. And it was frozen. And the, you know, the demons were doing what they do. And I started singing. Mm -hmm. So I started singing amen with my mouth closed and um, it just it just broke whatever spell they were trying to put over me. It just broke it. And then I started, you know, like, and, you, and Yahushua HaMashiach's only name, I bind you in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, I cast you out. And da, 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 da. I just like went mad on those demons and, you know, they weren't expecting all that, you know, so it was done, you know, and I woke up and I was like, cool, you know, uh huh, because it was kind of like a um, lucid dreaming, you know, so I was like, yeah, this is cool. Um, and then I woke up and I looked at my iPhone and there's just like new subscriber, new subscriber, new subscriber, new subscriber going down my iPhone. And I'm like, what the heck, you know, is going on? And um, in total, I think like maybe 75 people came from Sister Polly. Uh, Hi, Sister Polly. We will definitely be talking more soon. I look forward to that. Um, so she shared it 
I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe this all happened on Pi Day. Sister Polly, it, correct me if I'm wrong, you went through this on Pi Day. So the same time I was, because I'm in Paris, France, I don't know what state you're in, but probably the same time I was having a dream about the demons trying to shut my mouth was the same time you were, you know, publicizing my channel. So um, what was weird was, you know, I, I film these videos like a week in advance, sometimes two weeks in advance. I already have the video that will come out next Friday. It's already done, you know. So um, this message that was released yesterday is on Pi, Pi versus Phi. And the fact that you were drawn, the Holy Spirit uh, drew you to my Pi videos, because I have a hundred, more than a hundred something videos, specifically to the Pi video, the same day of Pi, when I was releasing that week, uh, the video on Pi really makes me feel, <laughs> at the same times the demons were trying to shut me up in my, in my uh, spirit, really makes me feel that the Most High Father wants us to know this message about Pi. Now tell me, am I, does that not seem that way? That I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. That's what it seems like to me. Okay, so um, I thought that was really a big blessing, you know, a, a big, big blessing. He finally, I've been doing this for one year publicly. He's been training me and teaching me for the past 20 years. And finally, I really feel like this last video I did, I was better able to explain the message. Like he gave me blessed me to be able to, as clearly as I have ever done before, explain the message. So um, at the same time, bringing the people to hear it, at the same time he has prepared me to give it. It was miraculous. What happened on Pi this year is nothing short of a miracle. Okay, so let me, let me show you uh, more so you guys can uh, understand where I'm going with this. So there were two messages that I think came out of this, at least two, probably much more that I, I can't even see. So, so that was the first point, the timing of the new people coming, the message having been prepared and the Pi Day and all of this. The second point was that the Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKadosh has been telling me about spiritual attacks and how we, will be stronger to be able to fight back. And I just kept saying back to the Holy Spirit, like, I don't know, like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to say about that. I don't know what to tell you about how to fight, you know? And she was telling me, well, yes, you do. Yes, you do. And I was like, yeah, no, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> so, of course, as always, she's right. Okay, so I put that message about being um, attacked, which for me doesn't doesn't really happen that anymore. So then I put that, and then Vero, this is on the Facebook page, she says, I know how it feels to be attacked with demons at night. It's horrible, and they're really intimidating us, and they want us to be afraid to stop serving and following God. And that's what I was just trying to explain. It happens when you're ready to move up to a next level. They're trying to keep you from going through, pretty much. I was trying to understand the message because all of this stuff had happened on Pi in the dream. The demons were trying to keep my mouth closed. Obviously, I assume that means I should speak, but I wanted confirmation. So I asked for confirmation down here and I got 799. So I looked up the seventh book, the ninth verse and the ninth chapter in the Bible. Of course, I have the letter line for 799. The seventh book, the ninth chapter, turns out to be 1 Corinthians 9. And as confirmation again, of course, I didn't do this on purpose. We have 111. If you take off the zero, which you can, it's a placeholder. You have 111, all right, 111, which I just spent the past two videos talking about 111. And then you have the 4-4. Um, anybody following this channel, you know we've talked about how 4-4 is symbolic of Yahushua. Okay, so here is the verse that I was given as confirmation for it is written in the law of Moses, 
Thou shalt not thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth upon the corn. Doth God take care of the oxen? So I thought that was amazing. He's saying, don't shut your mouth. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is about as big of a confirmation as you can get. How clear is that? 11, 11, 111, 44. Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox. Wow. Okay. So then you see here that, um, you see here that the screenshot of the Bible verse that I just took, the number is 1488. So I had the bright idea. Well, let's look up 1488. Um, the book that I'm writing with the letter lines, it only goes up to 1000. So anything over 1000, I don't have. Um, I could break down 148, 814, 841, but I, I didn't want to do that. So I just looked in um, Strong's for 1488, and it turns out it means a shearing or mowing uh, of the sheep, the fleece of the sheep. And so then I looked up the Bible verse where it, com where it comes from. In general, what it means is that it's the first fruit of your labor. So it's talking about the priests and uh, we have to give them an offering for their work. And so you give them the first fleece of your sheep as, you know, offering to, to their work. So it's like representing the first fruits of labor. So what I understand the message to be, it's very beautiful indeed. Um, I've been working very hard over the years. You guys have been working very hard over the years, and we are indeed beginning to come together. We are be indeed beginning to learn and grow. And um, this process that uh, of the wilderness, probably, or the process that's going to happen over between now and the next four and a half years of us becoming spiritually literate, of us becoming stronger, and um, preparing to do whatever work is going to be uh, ahead of us uh, after 20 2022. This is the first step, guys. This is this is the first fruit of our labor that we have done up until this point. This is we have arrived to a new level of of this thing that's happening. Okay? This is a wonderful message. This is wonderful. Congratulations everybody. <laughs> Congrats. Yay, yay for us. Yay for us. <laughs> yay for Yahushua. Hallelujah. Um we did something. Okay, on Pi Day, something happened. Now, the other part is, as soon as I put on the, the, the page that I was being attacked, everybody else started saying that they were being attacked too. Now, when I say attack, I don't mean a general attack, like you just always under attack. I'm talking about like on the days in question, the day before Pi, the day of Pi, the day after Pi, like that amount of that space of time. A lot of us were being spiritually attacked, okay? So uh, Vero here, she's saying, um, Oh Lord, it's being like two months since my attacks, but last night I was sleeping and I dreamed I started suffocating again and couldn't breathe. So I tried to move and felt from bed and I ran into the bathroom and in the mirror saw myself. So she, she I, I'm sorry, Sister Vero, I don't have all of your quote here. My bad. But she had attack. And she fought and she won, of course. Uh, Dinah, thank you for adding me to the group. I also found you through Sister Polly. Although she knows me through a different name, I'm also under attack, but it's always worse around the holidays. So she was also under attack at the same time. Um, I'm telling you, everybody and their mama just came out like, yeah, me too, me too. Um, Tia, okay, so it's my sister from another mister. Hey, T. Um, so she was like, so demons are visiting our folks. I had an encounter Wednesday night. Uh, today is Friday. So that was Pi, I guess, 21 hours. Yeah. So yeah, she had it on Pi night. Um, she had an encounter Wednesday night. She was peacefully asleep and woke briefly and smelled a really bad foul smell in the bedroom. Nothing, um, seen just a smell. I knew in my spirit it had to be demonic. Not sure why it, it came in that form but my god it was an awful scent so i prayed and it departed from me it seems we are all being attacked at the same time i noticed satan knows he can't win yes something's going on maybe uh we're getting too close to the truth so i really feel like the evil the enemy they knew that this miraculous wonderful whatever happened on wednesday on pi day 
they knew it was going to happen and they all attacked us to try to keep us from whatever wonder has happened can you see this this is amazing my antenna went up and i was like doo, 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 doo. okay something's going on right and then the the nail i mean the the nail in the coffin the last bit like i was up to here i couldn't take it anymore was right here and this is sister saved by grace so she said hi sister saved by grace uh I see 133 all the time. I got attacked by a demon in my sleep one day and I called out for Jesus and called out for Michael, the archangel, to help me, but they didn't come and the demon didn't let me lose. Loose, loose, not lose, loose. After a while, I woke up and I was crying, asking God, why didn't you help me? And you always help me when I call you and when I'm being attacked. Right after I asked him why he didn't answer and showed me 133. What do you think it means? And this is when everything came together. This was when it was like, oh, I understand. And the message is that everything the Holy Spirit has been telling me all this time when I was like, uh-uh, she was like, uh-huh. And I was like, uh-uh. You know, she was right, of course, always. Um, that's exactly the message. Um, what are we to do when we are attacked, um, ex especially in our, our dreams? Because they're not actually, it is a dream state, but it's really happening. It's just that because we're asleep, we're able to interact with that dimension that we can't necessarily do in, you know, when we're awake. Okay, so that's why I say it's more like, um, a lucid dreaming situation so here let's let's go to 133 because sister your comment really helped me to put everything together so by the way this is my website uh, wakefulnesstheology.com for the letter lines and I know a lot of you are new and you might not know what a letter line is but I'll explain at the end of the video for new people so if you want to find a particular letter line I don't have all of them published and what I do have published is not finished it's a work in prog progress um, and I'm not even sure I don't think I will post all a thousand of them I probably will only post 500 because of the um, artificial intelligence I don't want to be feeding the beast information okay so probably I'll put 500 on my website as I go through and the whole full 1000 will be in a book form that you will have to physically get you know but that won't be it won't be finished for quite a while so you have time it won't be finished until 2023 um, so here I am uh, if you want to join the blog right here you put your email address and um, every time I make a entry you'll get it I try to do one a week um, so if you want to search for a particular letter line you just type it in under search and here you are 133 right so I click, if I have it, it will pop up. And so now 133, we've been dealing with this for a while. And as I've explained in other videos, my interpretation of what the line means grows with the more experience I have with that letter, with that holy letter and, and just life. The Holy Spirit is teaching me step by step, you know? So I know that this is like a, at minimum, a fourth dimensional situation. And I'm only on a... <laughs> We only have three, you know, three dimensional reality. And this is like a four dimensional uh, quantum uh, situation. And here, because I'm taking two holy letters and adding them to make a sentence, um, there's a lot of interpretation that needs to go on. So thanks. This is from, uh, in general, this is coming from Strong's. It's the Hebrew and the Greek translation of 133 from the original version of the Bible. All right. So when you look up on Strong's, 133 means thanks, offering, thanksgiving, praise, and com commendation. Now, of course, when you put all of these, you know, both of these letters together, this is my interpretation of it. And pretty much it involves the Prince of Persia, who's coming uh, very shortly. But without the letter line, because if, sister, if you're seeing 133, and if we only look at 133, it means thanks, offering, thanksgiving, praise. This is when I understood the message, guys. Let's go back here. Thanksgiving praise. Thanks offering, thanksgiving praise. That's the meaning of 133 in uh, Strong's. 
So she just had the the bad dream where she was attacked and she saw uh, the 133 when she asked why didn't she get help. 133 in the original uh, Greek of, of the Bible is praise. That's exactly what <laughs> Ruach HaKadosh has been telling me to tell you. And I kept saying no. <laughs> so I'm sorry. But this is confirmation of the message that... What you have to do when you are in that dream state and you are being attacked by demons is you have to praise and worship Yahushua, just like I did when my mouth was closed and I started singing Amen. So it, it, it doesn't matter. you Whatever it does for you, whatever makes you praise and worship Yahushua, that's what you have to do in the dream state, which is a bit like lucid dreaming that's what i say because in lucid dreaming you're asleep but you're able to make choices you're able to move you're able to deal right you're not it's like the difference between watching tv and just you know turning off your brain and just letting yourself be influenced by everything that's happening on the tv or being having wakefulness and watching something on TV and being aware that there's a message being given and then you purposely being able to choose and understand and and and, and deal with that um purposefully there there's a difference and it's the same in the dream is the dream just happening to you or are you able to uh, maneuver and to act and to to you change the dream and not let the dream change you. You see what I mean? I, I don't know if I'm explaining well. But the way that you get to this level of being able to lucid dream and deal with this in your dreams is that you do it in your daily life. So, ooh, thank you. Thank you, Rohak HaKadosh, because I feel like, ooh, I'm getting something put on, taken off my chest, okay, that I didn't even know was there, but okay. Um, so I did a video called the, you know, 10... I don't know, 10 steps or, or 10 things you can do in your spiritual practice. So here's the video. Uh, please look at that. And the idea is that we need to be doing what Yahushua did when he was here. We need to be following him. He set an example. We need to be following his example. If he did it, do it. If he didn't do it, don't do it. It's really that simple. You know, of course, you do what you can do. You're going to grow in your spiritual evolution. And what you can't do now, you might be able to do later. You just got to keep working day by day. It's all good. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is that the fact of in your daily wakeful life, you are praising Yahushua. Okay, so I have music that I listen to every day and I'm and I have this music in me. It is a part of me. I, I, you know, when I'm praying and when I'm doing so when I'm sleeping and a demon comes, it is automatic. I'm like. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to sing because I have my own things that I sing and do and um. I don't want to influence people to do what I do. So that's why I'm not uh, telling you what songs I listen to or anything like that. But the point being is find the song and do it in your daily living life. And you do it and you do it in repetition over and over. You don't know how many times I sing uh, these songs. I mean, every day, all day, man, it's burned in me. These songs are inscribed in me. You know, um, I listen to Joshua Aaron a lot. If you like Joshua Aaron, you can listen to him. Um, just to give you some ideas of uh, people you can listen to. But whatever it is, that praise and that worship has to be instilled in you in your wake waking life. And the next time you are attacked, you start praising and worshiping Yahushua and they will flee from you. I'm talking like I remember years ago, I was having a, a, one of these dreams and the demons, they were trying to materialize. Like I saw like the, the, the sparkles, like they were trying to materialize, like Star Trek beam me up and you just see like the beginning of the thing. And I started praising and worshiping Yahushua and they couldn't even materialize. They just disappeared. They were like, oh, never mind, forget it. You know, it just disappeared. Um, that's what Ruach HaKadosh is teaching us. 
through this. This is what she wants us to understand. When you're being attacked, don't be like, Jesus, help me. Be like, whatever worship, whatever, whatever worship it is. There is no one above him. There was no one before him. He is the first, he is the last. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Yes, praise him. And I, I usually do it in song form, but uh, whatever works for you. You do it in your daily life and uh, they will not be able to stand before you in your when you sleep. All right, guys, I hope that's clear. I hope, I hope, I hope that I have clearly explained that. All right, so I'm going to finish this uh, video. Again, special thanks to Sister Polly for being obedient and, uh, to the Holy Spirit and for being a servant and, and a worker for the uh, Most High Father's Kingdom. Thank you, Sister. It's beautiful. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm in awe at what happened on Pi Day. So this is another uh, comment that I got from, you know, there's all these new people. I think there was like at least 70, 80 new subscribers in one day, dude, on Pi Day. So sister, you, you need to start from the beginning and go slow. This is over my head to the point I want to turn it off. I will continue to listen and pray about it. So this is a message that I think everyone can relate to especially me because as i've said before i am not a scientist and i'm not a mathematician ruach hakadesh is teaching me these things and i don't even know how i know it except as i said before um i had the a spiritual phenomenon happen to me where for a couple of years every night i was just being downloaded with spiritual information i was literally going to a spiritual school like in space or somewhere i don't know where it was ruach hakadesh is pointing out things to me piece by piece and i understand because i think i've been trained and i've been given i've been blessed with that uh, knowledge that i don't know i know it without my brain if that makes sense so I'm learning at the same time you are, <laughs> you know, it's like taking a piece of the spiritual information that I've been given and bringing it into a materialization, you know, through my mind and my mouth, that something that I knew in my spirit, but not in my mind. So we're together in learning this at the same time, sister. And I know it can be daunting. I feel it when I'm doing these videos and I, I'm trying to explain something and I just feel like, are you kidding me? Like right now, like how am I going to explain this? You know, I, I know exactly what you're saying. So here, um, I'm, I'm explaining here that, you know, I've been going through this for like 20 years and I've been doing it publicly for one year, which is now making me a little bit better, I hope, at presenting things. Um, but Ruach HaKadosh will teach you and tell you everything you need to know. Absolutely. No doubt about it. So keep sticking with it. Um, it's not easy. It's really hard and we should expect that because it's the most high father. So we shouldn't expect to know everything instantly. Like I said, I was downloaded with a lot of stuff and I still didn't understand because it's too much. You know, so we can only chew on a little bit a day and have patience and just keep at it and continually be fed. That's what the, the point is right now is that the body of Christ, this next four and a half years, we need to be, we need to get spiritual nourishment. And that's what this is about, getting spiritual nourishment. Whether you understand why you have potatoes or tomatoes on a sandwich, <laughs> It doesn't matter if you understand why you have the tomatoes, just eat the tomatoes, okay? Um, I, I will put this underneath this video here. Um, the first playlist I did, I tried to put all of my videos in playlists so that um, people, I took, I, I understood from Jonathan Kleck, for example. When I go to his channel, I just see all these videos and it's overwhelming and you have no idea where to start. With him, I just started at the beginning and that worked for me, that was great. Some people don't have time for all of that. So I made playlists and I tried to organize everything in the playlists. Now there's some videos on my channel that are not in playlists, but I think the main information is in a, a playlist somewhere, okay? So things really started coming together for me with this, uh, the first link, which is Troll Hunters, is when I started um, talking about the five groups of Yahushua's Bridal Army, which I will come back and talk about that more in the future. 
and I was explaining that we are the ephod. So I was explaining that the ephod is a weapon and it's Yahushua's weapon and we are his ephod. Okay, in in that uh, playlist, and then we were we discovered that we are the ornamentation of the foundation of New Jerusalem, um, and we started talking about timelines, and so all of that is in that first playlist, the Troll Hunters series. Um, if you don't want to see that, I understand because it's very slow. The Holy Spirit is just teaching me like like little pieces at a time, and I'm giving you little pieces at a time, so it can it can take a long time to go through 12 videos, you know. So if you don't want to do that, um, the second playlist is right here, and I think it was it's the continuation of the first playlist, but we're focusing more on Janus, the duality, and the enemy, and the deception that is coming. And then, um, of course, if you have the courage, the strength, you can try the playlist that is after that. Everything is in order on my playlist. The, the first playlist is the most recent. The last one is the first one. This one right here was the one I did before the current one I'm doing now. Um, and in here, we're talking about the 2022. I had a message about four and a half years. So in this playlist, I'm explaining all that's supposed to, I assume, I, I explain what's going on with 2022 in this playlist. Pretty much, if you, if you want to go back and try to catch up with... Um, what we're talking about, that's the way to do it. If not, just let the Holy Spirit guide you. And, um, you know, there's a lot of material out there. I think the, the good thing about it is that the Holy Spirit just gives us little pieces. So, for example, this playlist, um, Yahushua's uh, symbols and numbers and shapes and whatever, <laughs> etc. Um, she just gave us 153 triangle. And then 153 triangle opened up the whole everything that's happening now okay so that's how it works she's just going to give you one piece of the puzzle and if you understand that one piece then everything just you know so if you don't have the time or you don't want to or you might not even agree with me you know whatever the situation is just get that one little piece and then follow that one little piece she will teach you in a way that you can understand and you will be fine. Just keep your eyes on Yahushua and keep looking for his face, right? That's all, saints. Everything will be well. Everything will be fine. All is good. Uh, again, here's my uh, Wakefulness Theology YouTube uh, channel. So you just go to playlists here. Of course, you have all the videos in order. For example, here, this is the playlist, right? And then you view seven more. So there's seven more uh, playlists here. The Holy Fire Will Burn Through the Church was a very important message I got um, at the beginning of this. Uh, four is symbolic of the cross and 44 is symbolic of Yahushua. These are like the first messages I, I was getting. The 37 and 73, that's a playlist. So the, the playlist that I would suggest you guys start with if you would like to catch up. Uh, what is wakefulness theology? This is good to have a general idea of what a letter line is. Then you have troll hunters and these are the four I was telling you about. These are the latest four where I think the messages started coming together. Uh, before these four playlists here, um, I was just dealing with individual stuff and trying to understand. This is a very important message about the Oculus and the Mark of the Beast. So these two are very important. But as we, as I go through these four playlists, I always refer you back to the video in question as I go through. So, so there you go, guys. Welcome to Wakefulness Theology. I'm really happy to have you here. Thank you again to Sister Polly. Um, and let's give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahushua HaMashiach um, for, for blessing us this at this time and, and bringing the five groups of the bridal army together and uh, the body of Christ and uh, blessing us to, to get spiritual nourishment and to become spiritually uh, literate in these days so that we will be prepared um, for whatever is coming up uh, in the next four and a half years that we can keep from being deceived because the deception is so great that even the elect would be deceived if it were possible. 
right? But um, with the spiritual nourishment and the spiritual knowledge that the Father is giving us and preparing us to, it, it is not possible. Just stay, keep your eyes on Yahushua. Practice every day, all right? Um, I pray that you are well, saints. Shabbat shalom. Wow.